Hello everyone, I'm Carol McNeil. If you get your mail delivered to your door, be prepared for a big change. Canada Post is getting rid of that service, replacing it with community boxes. It's part of a plan to regain their financial footing. Hannah Thibodeau is following the story. She joins me live from our Ottawa bureau. Hannah. Well, moving from the door-to-door -door service to the community mailboxes will be a five-year transition. They expect to have it all done in the next five years. Uh, they say one-third of Canadians get their mail delivered to their door, so the households. Now, take a look at the potential savings. This is uh, something that was done by Canada Post. You see there, currently more than 5 million Canadians receive their mail at home. The average annual cost per address, $269. Group mailboxes. There are nearly 4 million Canadians who currently use the group mailboxes. That number is going to go up drastically. Uh, and the average annual cost per address with group mail is $117. So you can see big savings there. In fact, the Conference Board of Canada has estimated the elimination of door-to-door -door service will save $576 million by the year of 2020, and that's per year. Now, also, the price of stamps going to go up drastically. So to mail that Christmas card next year, it's going to be a lot more. Currently, it's 63 cents. And for, that's for standard mail. If you buy a booklet or a roll of those stamps, it's going to be 85 cents per stamp. So that's what it will average out to. And if you just want to buy that single stamp to send something across the country, that will go up to $1. And that's by March 31st of 2014. That's when that's going to be implemented. Now, the number of employees also is expected to be reduced. Between six and 8,000 employees will no longer work at Canada Post, and they expect to do this through attrition over the next five years. They hope to mostly do this through attrition. We'll hear from the union a little bit later as to what they think of that. And then also they're going to open up more of those franchise post offices. You know when you go into a drugstore and at the back there is that post office? Well, they expect to open up more of those. Currently there are 6,400 of those franchise offices right across the country. Okay. What's the rationale behind these changes? What does Canada Post expect to get out of it? It's all about money. They've had uh, some cash crunches over the past little bit, uh, plummeting volumes of letters uh, because people are using the electronic media or electronic uh, ways to send their mail now. They uh, have in 2012, take a look at this number. In 2012, they delivered one billion fewer pieces than in 2006. So you can see big plummeting numbers in delivering that mail. And in the last quarter, there were financial losses of $129 million. So they felt they couldn't continue on this path. Take a listen to what the Canada Post spokesperson has to say about it. We've seen year over year large uh, decreases in letter mail. That's going to continue. That's that's a reality. The the the, the bills and invoices uh, are are just going to disappear as people are busy and they go online to pay those bills. We get that. Um, that will continue. There will still be a, a future for mail, as people say. Well, it makes more sense to order something uh, online, like a government ID or a health card, than go line up at the office. And if it's in a locked box, I'm okay with that. And you know the the shopping, the online shopping. We delivered 1.2 million parcels on Monday alone. That's, a, that's an absolute historic milestone for us. Now, the viability of the pension plan is also another concern for Canada Post and the cost of that. We have received a comment from the minister responsible for Canada Post, Lisa Raitt. Take a look at what she had to say. The government of Canada supports Canada Post in its efforts to fulfill its mandate of operating on a self-sustaining financial basis in order to protect taxpayers while modernizing its business and aligning postal services with the choices of Canadians. And also, the NDP held its final caucus before the Christmas break up here. We heard from them, and what they're saying is that they're concerned that this will see a big cut in services uh, to Canadians. So there is concern from the opposition and we'll hear from them a little bit later too. Yeah. I'm not sure, Hannah, taking out the, uh, the post office, the individual delivery of mail to individuals is exactly aligned with Canadians' choices, but uh, we take her point. Hannah Thibodeau in Ottawa. Hannah, thank you. Quite welcome. Canada Post has been bleeding cash for years now and has warned of these big changes to its business model. Our business reporter, Anne Gaviola, is here with more on this. Anne.
Carol, I want to pick up on that number that Hannah used, the $576 million a year uh, projected uh, in savings for Canada Post. That's a conference board, a think tank estimate. Canada Post saying today, actually, they expect savings in the neighborhood of $700 to $900 million a year. Uh, so this is pretty significant when you consider the fact that this company uh, is expecting to post a billion dollars a year into 2020. So you do the math, it is enough to stem the bleeding, but it is not enough to stop it, per se. Uh, let's talk about the decline in volumes. Hannah touched on this. I want to show you this chart. It's pretty uh, dramatic, and I think it tells the story very well. So we saw volumes peak in 2007 and 2008, about the same there, 11.8 billion pieces of letter mail delivered, and then a big slide, so a roughly 25% drop since 2008. Uh, we know that more Canadians are using email, paying and viewing for their bills online. That is certainly a big contributing factor. Now let's talk about what this decline translates into, although Canada's po Canada Post's parcel business remains quite viable. Have a look at the profitability. So they've been uh, seeing quarterly losses since 2011. The exception there is Q4. So this time last year, uh, likely due to this being sort of the busiest time of the year for them. A lot of people sending Christmas cards as well as parcels delivered to them from things they've ordered online. Mm -hmm. Now we have an announcement today from the federal government uh, that they're going to be giving Canada Post four years of relief for making up the six and a half billion dollar pension shortfall uh, that this company is currently saddled with. Okay. Uh, as we were saying earlier, a lot of people, I mean, this it's so convenient to get your mail at your door and more convenient for some people than others. This is going to have a big impact on a lot of people in particular. Absolutely. So a certain group of people are going to feel this a lot more than others, but you also have to consider, Carol, that already two-thirds of Canadians, those who live in rural areas, people who live in those new developments, are already using the community post box type of service. Um, but for the third of Canadians still relying on this door-to-door -door service, uh, the elderly, people with mobility issues certainly going to feel that impact. Uh, there's also a sizable impact on small business here in Canada. A lot of people that I've been speaking to say, you know, study after study suggests they're very reliant on that door-to-door -door service. Um, especially when it comes to things like invoices and payments for their customers and their clients. That saying, the check is in the mail for small Canadian businesses, it's 100% true. So, Okay, and thank you very much. You're welcome.